I have something for you you have to try. <laughs> this is AP. He's my flatmate and there's a very good reason why he's so excited about the sandwich. Let me explain. After months of traveling in Latin America where we shot a documentary, we had this three day layover in Miami. So being a huge foodie, of course I asked around what I could eat in Miami and the answer was overwhelmingly Cuban food. And here's why. Cuba is so close to Florida that people have been going back and forth between the two places pretty much ever since. But especially after the Cuban Revolution, the migration of Cubans to Florida has really exploded. And you know, with economic conditions not always being that great in Cuba, a lot of people began saying that the best place to get Cuban food might actually be Florida or Miami specifically. So to get a taste of real Cuban cuisine, we did visit the legendary Versailles, which was incredible, of course. We even had one of those tiny little Cubano coffees. Mm. But the best Cuban meal we've had in those three days was, a little bit surprisingly, the Cuban sandwich at Enriquetas. Is the Cubano sandwich a Cuban invention or is it a Cuban American invention? Nobody's really clear on what's going on there, but either way, it was hands down one of the best sandwiches I have ever had in my entire life. And then one thought hit me, and this is where this whole story begins. Follow me. Literally everything that is important for a Cuban sandwich can be bought in Germany in really high quality. Bread? Yes, please. Pork and ham? Yes. Mustard? Dill pickles? Butter? Yes. Cheese? Of course. Everything. There are huge differences, of course. No question about that. Cuban roast pork, for example, is marinated in a sauce called mojo with lots of citrus and fresh herbs and there's no way I'm gonna get that over here. Just like a pan cubano, the soft Cuban bread that's traditional in a Cuban sandwich. It's so much more tender than the crusty loaves you get in Germany. I don't know. But of course that German stuff over here is great as well. So I'm thinking, what if I took all these really great local specialty ingredients and then had them come together into what I believe to be one of the most iconic sandwiches of all time, the Cubano. I'm gonna turn this into a little experiment. You know what they say, right? Think global, act local. I'm gonna go hit an old school Berlin market today, if I can find it. Damn. It really should be nearby. Ooh, I think I see it. The market was a great place to get some high quality ingredients, especially the cuts of meat that are so important for every Cubano. I gotta say though, that rustic German loaf I got just didn't feel right. Pan Cubano is just so much more airy and tender. But that problem turned out to be quite easy to solve. I got what I needed, almost freaked out because it looked for a second that Emmental was sold out, but it wasn't. And now I just had a brilliant idea regarding that bread because I think one of the closest things to Pan Cubano I can find in Berlin might very well be Turkish bread. Well, if that doesn't look like Pan Cubano, then I don't know what does in this country anyway. I think we're getting pretty close. And finally, having all my ingredients together, it was time to hit the kitchen and prepare the German Cubano. Let's see what we got first. Some juicy ham with a crust of herbs and paprika. Another type of ham, this one's much more smoky. This is some Italian-inspired fennel salami. And of course, how could that be missing? Some roast pork. You think we got enough pork? So I'm setting all my meats aside and moving on to the bread. And look how squishy and soft this one is. There are a few toasted sesame seeds on here, but I don't think that will be an issue at all. Then here's my spicy and sweet German mustard. Pan Cubano is normally made with yellow mustard, which is a little bit different, but this one that I got is from Bautzen, a place that is only two hours away, and it's also really well known for great mustard. So how could I say no to a great local product? And now let me introduce you to the Spreewald Dill Pickle. These guys are world famous and also grown just a few hours away from where I live in this picturesque area called Spreewald. And you can get them in pretty much every supermarket here in Berlin, which we actually kind of take for granted sometimes. So I'm being a little bit more aware this time. I also got two types of Swiss cheese, which is not exactly local, but you know, Switzerland is a neighboring country, so I thought that... Um... And now let's assemble that Cubano. This is really nothing complicated. First, we slice up that bread, and then we decadently top it with our four types of pork, then the cheese of our choice, and thinly sliced Spreewald pickles. Then we evenly spread some mustard on the top half of our sandwich loaf, and then we give it a good squeeze for no particular reason, before finally placing it on a sandwich grill, which is the closest thing that I happen to have to a plancha. 
And of course, we couldn't call it a Cubano if we didn't spread some butter love on top for that rich extra crunch. Now set your grill to medium and then make sure that cheese completely melts and a mere few minutes later you will be rewarded with a deliciously ooey gooey cheesy melty meaty cubano sandwich. Look at these beautiful layers of flavor. Okay let's do a cheese pull test. Um Passed with distinction. And now, for the final moment of truth that we've all been waiting for, we're gonna go and find my flatmate AP to see if my German Cuban Frankenstein sandwich will bring back memories of Miami and great Cuban food to him. Because he's the only one who's shared the original experience with me. Hey AP, I have something for you you have to try. What? Sandwich. Do you remember the epic Cuban sandwich we had in Miami? So I recreated that with only German high-end ingredients, like good ham, good salami, Drehwalsch pickle. Yes. Okay, I'll try. Yes. You know why you're getting this? Why? Because you're my friend, but also because you are my first and so far only supporter on no <laughs> supporter on Patreon. Oh, awesome! It's well worth the one euro per month. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you say? What do you say? So cheesy, really good. Does it bring back memories of Miami and Enriqueta? Uh -huh. How many stars out of ten? Twelve. I knew you'd say. Is it, is it worth it becoming a Patreon supporter of mine? Definitely. Then you will get all the food in the world. Now it is finally my turn to dig in. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, normally I'm all about recreating foods in the most authentic way possible. But today I wanted to show you guys that sometimes it's really worth going out and seeing what kind of great local products you have and sometimes using and incorporating these local products into world famous recipes can result in something entirely new that is actually really delicious just like in today's little experiment do subscribe to my channel and make sure to hit the bell to never ever miss out on weekly food inspiration from all over the world and i'll see you guys in the next video